Are we up and running? Yes, we are. Good morning, good morning. Drizzly day here in Asakusa. I got really lucky when I went up to the pool this morning. It was not raining, but it was threatening. And when I came back just about 10 minutes ago, it was actually raining, so I had to jog back. Got my hair still a bit wet. A grey day in Asakusa. <laughs> morning, good morning. <laughs> made it, just made it, just made it. I stayed too long at the pool today. No, I didn't stay too long in the pool, I stayed too long in the bath. And because of the holiday last week, I was off four days one week and then four days the next week. I can't go to the pool on a national holiday. So I only got two days there last week, Wednesday, Thursday. And then when I went back this week, Monday was a holiday. I went back Tuesday, Wednesday, today, Thursday. But Tuesday and Wednesday, the pool, not pool, the, the uh, uh, bathtub was closed for maintenance. Hang on a sec, what have we got? This is the desk camera. What does it say? There it is. Loose connection there. So, so, so. so the, the bathtub was closed for maintenance Tuesday and Wednesday. So one week I did get a chance to soak. And it was back this morning, so I really, really enjoyed it. I sat there in the pool, didn't go to sleep, but almost sat there in the bath sleeping. Okay, and we have a ton of stuff to do here. Still, we are chewing through the color blocks for the Patreon chibis, still. I don't know what we did on stream the other day. I finished off the one that we must have been carving. Yes, three faces are finished. So we're going to start a new face today. We'll do a new face, do some tracing, tracing paste it down, and get carving. <coughs> but before that, we got some stuff that left on my desk. This has already been opened. We know what's inside. It's back from Chiharu-san. Chiharu Kawaii. And she has done a massive, big stack of owls. This is how it works. This is how it works. Really, really happy with this one. Simple image, clean. It's kind of kitschy, I know. And if all of our, our work looked like this, it wouldn't really be cool. But uh, every now and then, we're allowed a gentle, peaceful, kitschy it may be, whatever. If if if, Hiro, if if you could call it Hiroshige Kitchi, then fine. There's enough good work from him. And she's done a really nice job on the background. This lady can kill it. Look at this. Those of you who have tried printing smooth backgrounds, and especially in blue. Blue is a killer color for us. This is not easy. There's 150 copies there. That should be enough to do us for a couple of months. It's been turned off on the website. It should be turned back on now, now that these are here. Let me go and make sure that's done. One second, please. If I jump out just for one sec to my, uh, to my browser manager system. Catalog update. Edit. Just a sec here, Owl in Moonlight. Anybody remember what number it is? Three, 334. And we have to turn it back on. Look at that, it wasn't turned on. Now that they're back, turned on. Okay, good, 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 sorry about that. Then what's next? We have another batch of prints coming in here. This is from Kubota-san. You've seen this before, actually. We've had a bunch of failures on this one. This is another batch of one of the prints from the Portrait series. And I think this is the third batch we've had in as many months. Because the first two batches came back from the printers nicely made, but unable to be sent out. I think the first group, what was it? We recarved the background block for the first one. Then the second group came back and we had a problem with the water. It was one of our outside printers, and they hadn't followed my rule about filtering the water. And the particular pigment we use here, the kind of vermilion, it's a sulfuretted mercury, I think is the chemical stuff. It's a mercury compound, and it reacts with iron. And if there's any iron particles in the water, and then the oil from the barren rubbing on the back, and you get 
grotesque spots in the pigment. It's not mold, it's not foxing, it's a, some kind of chemical reaction between the mercury and the iron and something in the oil. And the prints are all no good. And you can't see it while you're doing it, it comes up a couple of weeks later. So that batch of prints had to be turfed. It's, it's, I'm not using raw mercury, we're using a vermilion pigment. And I think, I, 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 the, the name for the thing is sulfuretted mercury. And it's a, I, I wouldn't want to eat it, but it's not something that it's grotesquely poisonous in and around the workshop. It's some kind of compound that has mercury as one of the components in some of the molecules, that's all. Now this needs to be embossed, and we could do that on the stream this morning, but I think that's not so interesting. So, you go to bed. I'll do that after the stream's over. But for today, let's get to some carving work. Okay, now we've got another complicated one today. What we have here is we have the transfer sheet from the key block, but what we want to carve are a lot of areas, color areas, that are not delineated by the key block. We have, for example, there's going to be some footprints here from the tanuki. There's going to be some uh, leaf shadows. We're looking down at the ground, and these branches are going to cast shadows on the ground. Now, how do we know where to carve? So I've got Jed's original Photoshop data, but those of you who have seen this before know the story. We can't just carve Photoshop data because the outlines are in the wrong place, or maybe in the wrong place. So what we're going to do here, this is perhaps going to be a bit surprising. Step one. Put this in place where we think it should go. And we can tell because we've got the border lines on both sheets. Probably it, but there's always a but. Some of the places, for example here, where the fish tail is going to be colored, if we look underneath this thing, the line is here. And if we were coloring this thing, we would want to split that line exactly halfway. But now with this Photoshop data on top, we can't see that line anymore because it's not going to get pasted on the block. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print this thing again on the key block. And that will then put that fishtail line in place on top of this sheet. Talking about the mercury still? I know Japan here these days is really strict on this kind of stuff, you know. I know some of the pigments that we get, I can't simply buy in the pigment shop. Some of the supplies, I actually have to talk to my local police department first. We've done this before. I have, I had, I guess it's probably expired now, when I was in Ome. 
I had been to my local police department, convinced them what I was doing, and got the little slip of paper that allowed me to go to the uh, pharmacy and buy formaldehyde, and I could go to my pigment shop and buy arsenic. <laughs> I don't think I have that anymore, but we're not using those things these days here anyway, so it's kind of irrelevant. But Japan is strict about this. So that pigma that we buy off the shelf at the pigment shop, I am sure, really is quite safe these days. Again, I, we wouldn't eat it. They know you're not going to eat it. Karen's asking, are we even going to be able to see these black lines on top of this? No, we're not. But what we're going to be able to see, okay, it's so difficult to explain these things verbally like this. Again, using that tail as an example, if it turns out that this black area for the blue is wide enough to cover what we need, then we're okay. But if it turned out that these color areas don't quite have enough width, what I'd be worried about is having a little white gap in there. And by printing this now on here, any black lines will, that are wider than this black will show. Any black lines that are narrower than this black wouldn't show, but it won't matter. So I'm just going to end up carving the black that I see. I'm sorry if it's, if it's ob ob obtuse, obstruse, obtuse. print this thing. Do I have a bar? No. So now we've got Jed's Photoshop data with, here we are, and this is, look at this, you can now see what we're talking about. Look at this, look at this, look at this. So we've got the Photoshop data in the super dark black, and you can see places like this, look at this. The black line now, which is sort of actually gray, that shows me where we really need to carve. So it's places like that, up here, up here, that fish tail. I've now got real, real data. If it turned out that the Photoshop data was too wide, let's see if we can find a place where it might be too wide. I don't know. Okay, maybe here, maybe up at the front of the bird's chest. My black line's not visible, so maybe the Photoshop data here is too wide. It doesn't matter. It will show later and we can trim it back. We are good to go. New piece of wood, let's roll. Progress. Yesterday, uh, Tuesday was the holiday. Uh, I mean, the shop was closed on Tuesday. So we took the time to work on the new Baron Kanban, the new sign. And what we're doing is we got the sign back from the printing company, Big Tapestry. It's uh, three meters wide, three meters deep. And on Tuesday, we trimmed it to, to proper size around and we glued over the end flap. So the Big Baron sign, three meters wide, it's made of this uh, sort of fabric-y, plastic -y strong stuff. But we're going to be stretching it. So in order to stretch it properly, we fold it over the edges and doubled it up so that we can grab that to stretch. And Tuesday's job was to do that folding, trimming, gluing. And we didn't get it all done in one day. 
So yesterday, uh, in the back room here of the shop, I did the continuation of that, and the, the sign is now ready for hoisting up in the air. And that happens next Tuesday morning. When the shop is closed. I think the gang will be taking pictures. I think they took a bunch of pictures yesterday. The idea is to put them on Instagram. I don't think they're up there yet. Has anybody checked their Instagram? Has the, have the Baron Kanban pictures gone up there? I don't know. John's asking, do we need blue jumpsuits and white hard hats? Probably technically, legally, yes. We probably need two people. Tanzan's coming over, and uh, Kawai-san, our printer, Mr. Kawai, Atsushi Kawai, he's coming over to help. So and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, lower it down. We'll, we'll rope up the current sign up there. Rope, put ropes on the sign, unbolt it, lower it down to the street level, and here at street level, we'll strip off the old cover, put a new cover on. That sign's been up there for 10 years, and even though it's a north-facing wall, it's really faded from the sun. If it had been a south-facing wall, my God, we probably would have had to be replacing it every year. I don't know. Sunshine is tough on images. Now we're going to get a peel here because what we've done is I've overlaid something completely on top of the whole thing so we'll be pulling off the backing sheet all together. two separate businesses across the street there now, the Ninja Boys. Daytime, they're doing the taikin with the kids. And during the, during the holidays, my God, they just ran it back to back all day long. Then when it gets to about dinner time, 5.30 or 6 or so, they shut down the Ninja activity. They have a little break for themselves. And then come about 7 o'clock, they open the Ninja Bar. And there are now two bars in Asakusa with the same name, the Ninja Bar. There's one over by the Ginza Line subway station. It's called Ninja Bar. And then there's the, across the street. And they, these guys put up their signs saying Ninja Bar. And they stand out on the street and tout for it. And uh, by the time I go to bed, 10, 10, 30, whatever, I can see outside my window. The place is jammed. It's jammed with tourists. It's a standing bar. They're all standing around, drinks in their hand, and chatting about, I don't know, chatting about ninja lore, I guess. But they're doing a roaring little business. come off that's the yellow paper and the original transfer sheet the only reason we needed that transfer sheet was so that I know where to land the Photoshop data in relation to the corner and now what we've got on the board here is just the Photoshop data sheet with lines printed on top of it to give me a good good data Actually, this one's going to take a while to carve, too. Ooh, I'm getting behind. <laughs> I 
the shop yesterday. <laughs> yesterday morning. <laughs> so many fun fans yesterday morning. Boom, 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 boom. Chum, chum, chum. Psh, bang. I can't break it. It's a ripped off piece of wet gumpy paper. And I... I'm not faking this. I mean, you can see what I'm doing. This stuff is insane, absolutely, completely insane. It's damp, I just peeled it off, it's not even a full sheet of paper, and I cannot break it. It's insane, absolutely insane. What are the scores? No, eight point... No comment. No comment. Russians. For the next Mokahankan update, please include a spreadsheet of my peel scores. No, why would I advertise this stuff? <laughs> so, so how far did my team travel each day to come to work? I don't know. They're all over the place. They're all over Tokyo. The longest, farthest one would be Teiko-san. The, the lady works in the shop here. She comes from Kawagoe. Cameron used to come from, uh, where did he come from? I forget the name of the house, place Moria in Ibaragi. I come from upstairs. I know typical Tokyo commuting times, no idea. People live all over Tokyo, I don't know, I'm sorry. I mean, we have the data actually because here in Japan, different from many, many other places around the world, the employer here, at least in, in a modern place like we are here, the, the employers pay all the commuting costs for their employees. This is not something Dave is, is giving his staff as a special deal. This is norm, the norm in Japan. The employer pays the staff's commuting costs, train, etc., train, bus, whatever. And it's a considerable expense. And they don't pay taxes on it. It's a separate benefit that is not included in the amount of money we calculate their tax deductions on. I have no idea when it started post-war. I have no idea. So it's different for each employee. And now and then there's a touch of employee envy on this. Uh, there was an employee... Mm, whatever, some years back. She's actually no longer with us for other reasons, but... Uh, and she drove, or she came by to work by bicycle in Omi. And one of the other ladies came by bus. So the bus lady was getting her bus fee compensated by Moko Hong Kong, as is the norm and probably the law, I don't know. And she wasn't getting anything because she came by bicycle. And she asked to be supplemented to the same amount that her co-worker was getting for, for bus. And I said, no, that's not the way it works. And she was kind of cheesed off at me, but whatever. You don't pay everybody in your company the allowance that is determined by the highest person. The convoy doesn't run at the speed of the fastest ship. 
And some companies now, it's, this is actually a thing in tech and whatever, they're paying Shinkansen. Some of their employees would live out closer in the country and maybe do semi-telework, come into the office X days a week by Shinkansen, and the company will pay their Shinkansen fees. This happens. In our case, uh, the scale and size of our company, we don't ask for paper documentation. There are some companies, what they would ask for is you, the employer, you, you the employee, you go to the JR train company and you buy your three-month pass, you bring a receipt back to the company and you get, uh, you get uh, compensated for it. Most cases are the way around. The company knows if he lives in Moria, he lives here, they go to the train company's website, you find the data, it's all known and you compensate the employee based on the, based on the distance he is from work. Now the downside on what we've done right here now is that it's all black. There's no uh, red color to guide me here. So I'm going to have to be careful. Could be bits and pieces of this if I don't notice. Like this one here, there's a black color on this, on this fish here. Is this our uh, hot cold towel, man? I can't tell, I can't see the sign on the truck. Maybe, I don't know. Is it another vegetable delivery? We won't know till he drives away. I don't think that's the towel truck. I think it's something else. Yeah, yeah, that's not the towels.
the next uh, event coming up here. There's a couple of things coming up. Uh, the NHK lady, igashira san she visited again yesterday afternoon, notebook in hand, to get more ideas for her upcoming program segment. Uh, it seems that, the, as I mentioned before, the, she enjoyed participating in our stream and being part of this, but it seems that's going to be nothing to do with the program. So the, the only idea that's going to be happening with the program here is it's going to be some small segment of a program that talks to foreigners who are living in Japan and asks them some specific thing about their life in Japan, I guess. And it seems the one she is going to focus on for Azat Moko Hong Kong. And she harped on at this yesterday. I don't know. It was sort of basically, what, why are we doing this? She had heard during the stream, I guess, that me talk about things like we're not interested in preserving Japanese culture or something like this. I, I forget the, the start of all the conversation here. But she had assumed that we were trying to, we were doing this to preserve Japanese culture. And I had blown that off and said, no, 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 I don't care about the preservation aspect, blah, blah, blah. So she poked around a bit more, yeah, what do you care about? Why are you doing this? That kind of stuff. So she was asking these sorts of questions yesterday, you know, what are you doing this for? And I think, I, I, again, I can't remember the exact words I said, but something like, why am I doing this? Basically, I'm selfish. I just, you know, want to have fun. I want to do something interesting for myself and have a good time with my life. You know, I think something like this. I wasn't trying to toss it off. I'm not a total hedonist. Dave isn't the kind of guy that would sit at the beach and just do nothing. But the, I think what I had said to her is that I want to have fun. I want to enjoy myself. And for me, the definition of enjoyment was a feeling like I'm doing something that has some meaning for society and, and blah, 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 blah. And it, what did it come down to? It? She, she really grabbed this idea that... that I, know, I know what I had said next was that I want to come to work each morning in a happy mood. And at the end of the day, when I'm finished the work, I want to still be in a happy mood. And then I had widened this. I said, the employees too. Part of the pleasure for me is providing an environment where other people can do the same thing. It wouldn't make any sense to take an extreme example. If I was the, the guy having all the fun, and if it was built on the back of, of pain and trouble by everybody else. <laughs> so I must have said something like, and the two of the, two of the staff were here listening while she and I were talking about this. And I must have said something like this. I want to create a work environment where when I see the employee coming in the morning, they're smiling and happy. And when they go home at work at night, they're still smiling and happy. And she grabbed onto this as though it was golden words of wisdom from some oracle. Like it was not what she expected Dave to say as being one of the main points of why we're doing this. You I mean, she's a Japanese lady grown up in a Japanese environment and works for a Japanese company, you know. And if you try to identify in a Japanese company, the main point of one, we, while, while we are do, why we are doing this in some Japanese company, the idea of employee happiness and satisfaction wouldn't be something that comes up on the radar very high. So, you know, so she grabbed onto this and maybe she's going to make more of this than should be. It should be. I don't know. So I've got to be careful. There's no filming yet. She's still exploring and trying to identify some core theme for her segment. You know? But I don't know. I've got to be careful about this. You know, if she could end up making more of this than, than we're actually thinking about it here, you know. I don't know. All these TV people, you never know what they're thinking or what they're trying to do. They've all got their own sort of, if I said agenda, it sounds a bit evil, but they do have their agenda. They've got their thing that they want to be doing and showing and talking about, you know. And sometimes that overlaps with, with what we want to talk about, and sometimes it doesn't, you know. I mean, if at the end of the day, if we ended up with a program or something that depicts Moko Hankan as this employee paradise where never a, a cloud is in the sky or nothing ever goes wrong or something like this, there'd be employees here who would just roll their eyes like, what is going on, you know? But things get exaggerated and they jump to their extremes. And it may, if I'm not careful, it may end up 
coming that way. She will paint as, a, as some wonderful place, you know. I don't know. So I think what she needs to do is get me out of the room and she needs to talk to a bunch of the employees you know, with Dave out of the way. So, you know, tell me the real story. What's it really like working here? You know? She's fun, and I think she's competent too. I know. We were we were after she left the other day. Me and one of the other staff were sitting here thinking, Dave, why don't you headhunt her? You know, she seems competent. Why don't you try and get her to work for Mokohanka? And I'm like, Yeah, I'm going to be able to headhunt somebody from NHK. The pension and everything else she's already got, like, not going to happen. You know. We know pronunciation. The 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 rickshaw rickshaw carts. Jin Jin Dikisha. Jin Dikisha. And the the second. So somebody's got it. Vivid KP's got it. I wouldn't say Jin. I would say Jin, as in the drink. Jin. It's closer to Jin the drink than Jin the DNA. So, Jin Diki Dikisha with the second I elided. Jin Dikisha. Days. <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been signing off emails recently with my name a bit distorted. The, the I've got this sticky cover on my uh, on my laptop, and some of the keys don't come out clearly sometimes. So I've been signing my name as Dai D A E. The V doesn't come through a couple of times. And that's a Korean name, Dae. So I guess I'm looking Korean to some of the people I send emails to. D A E, Dae, Mokohankan. So, as I said, the NHK thing is coming closer. We have no idea when she's going to film or what she wants. And all of this is really just for like a four or five minute uh, segment. So, it's no big deal. It's taking way more time and energy than it's going to actually uh, bring back. The other news is this coming Saturday is going to be a very, very, very important day for us. I hope. I'm not really quite sure. We have a visitor coming on Saturday, Saturday around noon. And this is Murata-san, the lady printmaker, blah, 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 blah. The lady papermaker who we saw in videos earlier. Karen-san here met her up in Echizen City during the printmakers conference last month. And Murata-san, the, the young lady, Naho-san, is coming down to Tokyo on the weekend to be part of a TV show. Nothing to do with us at all. She has uh, been invited. I don't know any details. I'll be learning about it on Saturday. And I'll, pa I'll pass on anything I learned to you, although almost certainly this is not something that would be visible overseas. This would be some kind of domestic Japanese TV program. She's been invited to appear on a, on a TV program. They're, they're bringing her down to Tokyo to do the filming. I don't know why. She can't make paper in a TV office, but anyway, whatever. While she's here on Saturday, she's, the filming is Sunday, on Saturday afternoon she's going to spend the afternoon here at 
Moko Hankam. And, you know, I, I can talk about some of this, some of it I can't talk about. We pitched her earlier on the idea that Moko Hankan and her could somehow uh, join forces, or could somehow use resources together, in that Moko Hankan wants a good steady supply of paper, and this young lady, it seems, would like to maybe have her own papermaking workshop. So at the moment, nothing is decided, and there are various uh, plans and possibilities have been tabled, put on the table, and actually what's going to happen, we don't know. But I got an email last night from her employer. And he knows she's doing this. He knows she's having discussions. He himself was here a couple of weeks ago. And he said, uh, look forward to her visit on Saturday. And he said, please listen carefully to what she will uh, be telling you. And then he ended with this, this, this typical Japanese uh, end of the line, we look forward to your you know, extended cooperation, you know, yoroshiku onegaishimasu. So they've cooked up something, they clearly have a plan, he, her employer, and she together. They know, because I've talked to both of them separately, they know the kind of things I'm willing to do and willing to offer. And they must have talked and talked and talked and planned and planned and planned and planned. And I guess she's going to come to me with either a, a, an acceptance of one of the things that I proposed, or she's going to make a counter-proposal, or she may be saying, you know, like, sorry, no, I'm going to do this myself with my boss up there, and uh, you are not really going to be a part of this. You know, I don't have any idea what's going to happen. It could go any, any one of those different ways. I really, 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 really don't know. You know, I'm trying not to sit here. You know, whenever there's something in play like this, plan A, plan B, plan C, one of them I really, really want to do, you try to have to remember, it's not always going to go the way that you want it to go, especially when more and more people are involved. Everybody has their own different goals and motivations and, and, uh, and ideas. So I'm trying not to get too excited about this. But yeah, I'm excited. Someone's saying, as long as they make the paper you want, the, does it matter all that much? This is Karen. Well, of course. I mean, at the end of the day, if I can do the business speak, blah, 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 whatever, we need paper. And the, the reason that I'm involved in these discussions at the beginning is because our current paper supply is looking iffy. And if, as part of these discussions, a good, strong paper supply comes into being, then yeah, I can't lose, and whether or not I'm part of it, if I'm, if I'm not actually going to be part of it, that's okay, as long as there is a good, steady, strong paper supply. So in that sense, it's no big deal. Dave would still be a little concerned, you know, the... I want to help make sure that it can move forward to the future and be a strong, consistent, stable paper supply. If they can do it totally without my cooperation, then there's, I guess, nothing wrong with that. But I would feel a little bit still like things are out of my control and, and I'm at the mercy of, of whatever's going on, of other people. You know. So I do absolutely want to be part of this, if only to help feel that our future ourselves would be more secure because we're partly in control of it. But do I have to be part of it to make it all work? As Karen says, no, I just need to put my order in and know that we're going to get paper. Done, move on to the next one.
So, someone's got it. The bus factor of one. Yes. I mean, that's the situation we're in right now. And we've been in this situation for, for years. Bus factor is one. We have to increase that number. In the old days, it was massive. There was no bus factor. Once it gets large, you don't even talk about a bus factor anymore. Bus factor only comes into meaning when it's, when it's one. That's when the concept comes into, uh, comes into being. Here's about the origin of the term, you know, getting hit by a bus. Where would that have orig originated? I don't know. Why would they be using bus factor instead of airplane crash or something as the, as the deciding? Don't know. It's been around for all my life, I guess. I don't know. The crows are out there today. They hit my garbage. And, uh, was it Tuesday morning? We put our garbage out Monday night. And when I came down on Tuesday to head for the pool, our garbage was strewn all over the street. So. And actually, it's my fault. You know, the garbage from the shop here, the, we've got garbage from three floors, the first floor, second, and third floors. And there really isn't food scraps and stuff in it. It's mostly... Uh, office type waste, you know, different packaging materials and uh, some of its food is the empty coffee capsules and stuff like that. That might be something that will smell. So if it's in our garbage, the crows would, uh, would come after it. But on Tuesday, it was absolutely my fault because I had, on my, in my own room, I had some empty 7-Eleven stuff. I'd had dinner from, from the convenience store the past couple of nights before that. And I had the empty 7-Eleven, you know, uh, trays and stuff like that. So I tossed them into the garbage without thinking too much about it. And they must have been near the top of the garbage. So during the night, the crows scented this and came down. And our own garbage had been opened up and strewn all over the street. So, so Dave got out there with a, with a broom and a, you know, dustpan and cleaned it all up. So. <laughs> bus problem, truck factor, bus truck number. But how far back does it go? I know what it means, of course, but uh, when did this start? I don't know. So I remember that too. Wear clean underwear in case you get hit by a bus. I remember that. My God, did people actually used to say that? Incredible. <laughs> so if it's got it, if you were actually hit by a bus, how would they tell your underwear was clean or not? <laughs> I never thought of that. I should have tried that. Come back to my mom and see what she should have said. <laughs> Uh, uh.
It was a tiger factor back in the old days. <laughs> what happens if fog is eaten by a tiger, you know, yeah. <laughs> Not to be confused with getting thrown under a bus. That's a different bus factor. I guess maybe buses used to be dangerous, I don't know. If you go back to the early days of like the omnibuses in London or New York or something, people are jaywalking all over the place and maybe getting hit by a bus was actually a, a thing, I don't know. These are construction noises that people you hear yelling outside. It's uh, around the back street. If you came out of Mokohankan, headed left, turned left at the next corner, and went down the short blocks to the arcade there, you go past the Taito Station Game Center. There's a new building. There was a hostel there. It came down. It was all torn down. We heard the, the deconstruction noises. And now something's going up. I think it's a hotel. It's like 12 stories. So they're there. It's concrete trucks, very narrow back streets. And to get the concrete trucks in there, they've got a backup, which means like 10 guys with flags and yelling and whistles. And that's a lot of the sound you're hearing. It's the guard men backing up the trucks to pump concrete. And it's going to be going on for a long time. That's, the building is still at the foundation stage and they're going, they're going up, 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 up. Excuse me. You can see it's perfectly the black from the color from the Photoshop and the black from our own key line. And here they're, they're lining up just perfectly.
someone's asking, is it raining or isn't it? It's trying to. I think it's just on the very edge, you know. Some people are carrying umbrellas, some aren't. I don't see any water bouncing on the street, do we? It's really hard to tell. It's just on the edge of it. Obviously, it's going to be a drizzly, rainy day here. Someone's asking, do umbrella companies get a lot of money during rainy season? The umbrellas, there's like, I forget the number, there's like 500,000 umbrellas lost in Tokyo every rainy day. For the train company, it's a massive problem. At the end of a rainy day, the train company literally has dozens of umbrellas from every train. They put them in a warehouse. It looks like the Raiders of the Lost Ark. I've seen a picture of it. They end up just crushing and pulping them because there's no way to re restore an umbrella to its previous owner. And these days, they go to the convenience store. They're called Gohyakuen Binir Kasa. 500 yen plastic umbrella. Gohyakuen Binir Kasa. It's a standard price. It's been the same price for decades. And every day that it's rainy, they, every convenience store in the city, whatever, they put a big rack of umbrellas out on the front and boom, 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 people buy them and then promptly forget them, leave them on the bus or train. So they should sell them back to 7-Eleven and around and around and around they go. You know. It's a plague for the train companies, absolute plague. What's our schedule here today? So we're carving away. It's now, oh, it's nine o'clock. Look at that, nine o'clock. Boom, boom, boom. Nobody even tested the nine o'clock button. Oh, well, I should have had a go at it. And show and tell. What have we got for show and tell? There is a package near my floor here. I don't know what's inside it. It's been sitting there a while. So we do have a show and tell. I, I doubt it's going to be all that ex ex uh, exciting. What else do I have? We'll see whatever's in that package. Well, that's the top half all scribed out, I think. I think I've got it all. This is going to be some kind of blue in the finished print. There's nothing blue for you to see here, but this will all be blue in the finished print. I see some of this stuff, these curves. These look like they match the previous ripples that we carved. So I think some of the ripples are going to be negative. Some of them are going to be positive blue. Some of them stop and start. We'll see what John has planned for us at the time we start test printing. We'll see what it looks like. Well, that's the top. Let's get to the bottom. Oh, uh, I understand. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Is, people are inquiring minds want to know, is it actually raining or is it just thinking about raining? We can't tell from the camera. When I got off train, uh, it was raining. It wasn't mm. so bad, but then mm. it stopped. Stopped. So at the moment... When I, when I left the house, it wasn't raining. Mm. So, like, mm. you know, mm. stopped and it started raining. Again. Just people are looking at the, at the screen here and we can't tell. The ground is wet, but I can't see any bouncing. Some people don't have umbrellas. Some people do. So, uh, at the moment, it's not raining. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But it's so cold today. I don't yeah, know. Chilly. Like the, so, the, the weather is crazy. Yeah, it's springtime. Up and down, up and down. So. Mademo. Hmm? 
Why are you surprised? It's, it's normal. I don't know, it's already May, so I don't feel like going back to winter is kind of crazy. Well, I don't think it's winter <laughs> cold, but I went to the pool this morning and when I get outside, I thought, ooh, maybe I needed a jacket, yeah. but I just went. So it's, it's, okay. not a, it's not a rugby t shirt day, isn't it? Well, I do have to put my clothes in the laundry. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You know, I wore it. Did I wear it yesterday? No, two days ago, the show. Two days ago, so, isn't it? So, isn't it? so back to normal. I mean, I'm on my ro I'm on my rotation. What do you mean? I wear a rugby shirt T-shirt once. I'm not going to wear it like six days a week. Yeah, so, so this is it. So this is it. I don't know. I I enjoyed wearing a lighter shirt, so I put it into rotation. So it'll come up again next week or so. I guess I don't know. Okay. Okay. Maybe you need a little, uh, few more rugby T-shirts. No, don't don't <laughs> no, talk no, no, about no, such okay, a thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> so, so. I don't know. I I finished off yesterday the the sign. Oh, did you? So, so I cleaned Even up the back room. I finished, well, finished means I put all the... Uh, oh, you already did? I did all the grommets. Okay. I was a good boy. I did uh, that last night. So, so. so we just need to put it up next Tuesday. Gonna? Yeah, I know we still don't have the hardware. The hardware hasn't arrived from Amazon. So maybe if you could, or you were one of the girls upstairs, if you could look into this, is the order coming or is it cancelled or... Okay. Because what I can do, I can go to Royal Home, Oak, Royal Oak. Royal Home Center again. Yeah. They have turnbuckles and grommets and stuff. Okay. When you order them though on Amazon, do mm. they say like you know uh, the uh, materials will arrive in yeah, one we, two days? Yeah, and we've already had a high touch chu message. Ah, uh, so this. So, so something's wrong. from Japan or I, China or somewhere. I don't know. I don't know. Please <laughs> just go to the end. Uh, okay. Okay. Have a look. So, because we've we've now got we've got uh, five days. And it's okay because there are turnbuckles in the home center, but they may not be a good wide variety. And I don't mm. want big heavy ones. I want, okay. Uh, you know. Okay, okay. Okay, so, so, so. We're putting up the sign this time a different way. What we did last time, we, we just tied all around the outside of the sign with sort of rope. And it just got loose and it got weak, it got floppy, we had to do it again. So what we're doing this time is we've made the sign bigger than the frame. We're going to roll it around the frame and I put grommets on the back and we're going to put wire between opposing grommets with a turnbuckle in it. Mm -hmm. And eight of those. So there will be eight turnbuckles around the shape of the sign. Mm -hmm. I may be asking for trouble. It may be something we will have to keep going and adjusting them over the years. I don't know. But, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like experiment, isn't we'll see how it goes. Oh, did you post on Insta? Did you put pictures up? Not yet. Not I always right. ask you to check the, uh, the ah, pictures first. Okay, so okay, I okay. prepare the, the caption and uh, the pictures. Let's so. do it this morning. Yeah, Let's do it this yeah. morning. Okay. okay. Stand by. Instagram post about the sign coming in <laughs> this morning. Okay. Yeah. Stress. This is Stress. still your know, preparation. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the post is actually ready, so I just need to send it to you. Okay. I didn't want to do it last night, so. No, we were busy. Yeah. Yeah. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Yeah. My Good. God. Thanks. Hi. Nothing special today. Just a normal day, I guess, can I? Yeah, I suppose so. We're shipping uh, Heroes Prince to Jed. Oh, that's it. That's the boxes there. Yeah, to show. The box, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I have something that I have to ask you, but I don't remember. I know. I have good uh, news to report. I don't want to talk too much about this on stream. We got hit last night again. And? Okay. Defense. <laughs> defense. <laughs> defense. Yes. Defense. We won. Defense. We won. Yes. <laughs> But maybe any, uh, That's enough. We're not going to talk about this on streams. <laughs> it's all right. Defense. <laughs> defense. <laughs> Death to bots. The bad kind. Robots, oh. they're mostly so stupid and so dumb, but whatever. And because our software is custom software, the robots that are out there looking for WordPress vulnerabilities and stuff like this, they hit us thousands of times a day. We're not running WordPress, but of course they don't know that, so they keep poking for the WordPress vulnerabilities and stuff like this. But every now and then the robot comes along, it's a little bit smarter, and we got one a few weeks ago. It signed up for one of our subscription series. It signed up over 30,000 times. <laughs> because our, our, our uh, you know, website accepts subscriptions. You know, it doesn't check, did you subscribe to this series 
uh, 10 milliseconds earlier. It wasn't checking that sort of thing, you know. So one night we got like over 30,000 subscriptions to a, to, a, to a subscription series, you know. So whatever, I, you know, it's an arms race, whatever, I arrange different things at this end. And now, if you have subscribed to one of our series, and if you try and subscribe again within X milliseconds, it will, it will uh, die. Yeah, talking about it, whatever. Where are we? Where are we? Nine o'clock. Let's do a bit more. Tanuki feet. Not too soon. Yeah. Oh, the water's all down here. So, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. She came down to get a bottle of our emergency water. <laughs> when, we, when I was doing the gluing last night, we've, we've got this. <laughs> Did she step on the cable? <laughs> Do we need to reboot the camera? Here's the, here's the interface. That's the cable from the outside camera. This is the video interface. Oh, the mo, I get the lamas. Hi, the mo. Oh, I guess it's okay. So we don't need to restart it. Is he gonna step on it again? That's the mail mat. <laughs> <laughs> Saved by the delivery man. <laughs> it's the mail man. What did he bring? I have no idea. Funny. What was it doing? It did some different color mixing to show. This is an HDMI cable. So if you wiggle an HDMI cable, I have no idea. <laughs> the the water. She came down to get a, a bottle of water. I know. As part of the earthquake preparation here, we keep food and stuff and water and we've got camping stoves and things like that and helmets and you know stuff for the the earthquake preparation but you can't uh, just leave the food sitting here and the water so what we do is uh, 
she she wanted to get water for the to feed the coffee machine upstairs. So we use our earthquake water supply, and we take it's first in, first out, first in, first out. So we've all, we keep way more water than we use in any given time, and we rotate it, of course. So normally this water sits in different places. We've got a bunch of this water supply in the back of the first floor, and a bunch of the water supply on the second floor, and we actually keep some more up on the roof because we never know what part of the building might be damaged or what part might get destroyed or whatever. We're trying to be sensible with the earthquake preparation stuff. Anyway, part of my work last night gluing this sign, I've got the big round sign, chop, 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 folded over and glued with epoxy glue, and I needed weights to hold it down. I couldn't clamp this thing. It's a three meter wide thing sitting on the floor. So I parsed the building looking for easily usable weights that I could use to hold this thing, and I stole their water from upstairs you know, two liter jugs of water. So this morning she went up there and realized the water was gone and she knew what I was doing. So she came down to, to get some of her water. In a major earthquake, of course, the, the water supply is one of the first things that gets clobbered. The pipes, a lot of the pipes are old. Many of them get cracked and fractured. So in an earthquake zone, bang, that's the first thing you're, you're stuck for is water. So we keep, I don't know what they've got. They've got maybe 100 liters or something. I don't know how much they've got. That's our time. Oh, 9.15. It is SNT time. Show and tell time. Oops, oops, oops. We're coming along. I know this one actually is not going to be too bad. Well, it speaks too soon. We've got all these feet to carve and all these shadows. It's going to take some time this time. Okay, we have for show and tell, we have a package, the contents of which I do not know. And we've also got something the mailman just brought. Let me go over there and see what he brought. privacy again it's a package it must be auction stuff that we got and the same thing this bugs me like crazy if I can do my get off my lawn gra 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 there's a the label here the post office label and this is really common in Japan I don't know if they do this in other countries the post office label this is something we bought on auction now, on auction you don't know who the other person's name is when you're buying something after the auction you win the auction boom you have to tell them your name and address because they've got to send the goods to you. You don't know their name and address and you put the money into the auction systems there and they give it to their bank account. And when the package arrives, of course, our name and address, they know who we are, the post office has to deliver it and then it just simply says privacy, 
what does it say? Privacy uh, high salt. Privacy shipping. We don't know who sent it. If I get a box of rocks, we have to try and go back through the auction site. Good luck on that one. So I really disagree with this. The idea that somebody can take a package to the post office, send it to the destination without giving a return address and without giving your own address. Dave, old fashioned Dave here. I think it's a book. What did we get? I don't remember. Okay, anyway, let's hit one. Let's hit this one first. Two packages. Let's hit this one first. This one, the person put their normal name and address. Someone says, how do you return stuff? We wouldn't be able to return it. This is auction goods we bought. We bid on an auction, we won it. And here it is, and there's no returns. So, so we did I hear about the murder of a couple of Asakusa restaurant owners? Yes, I did, of course. It's huge, huge news here in Japan. Not because of the Asakusa connection, because they had a bunch of restaurants all over the place. But because of the, you know, I think now the fifth or sixth person has been arrested with the deal about burning the bodies. I have no idea what the backstory is on this. I have no insights, nothing to bring you at all. I would guess it's a story of uh, money and debt, and uh, I don't know. If you look it up, there, there's some bodies were discovered in a burned condition up in the mountains. Two layers, three layers. Oh, I remember this. This is a cool little one. I remember this. A random sheet from a random album years ago. Age would be mm, late Meiji, kind of. If I'm going to put my finger on the calendar, I would say. 1900, somewhere on there. I don't know. Something I can read. I know it means old and now. I know old days and new days. Uh, picture book. I know. I think this is Te Kagami. It's. A, I think this is a character for a mirror, and it means. It would be an album of pictures, and it would be a mirror of images that show old and new, old and new mixed together. <clears throat> and some of these, I haven't a clue what we're looking at, calligraphy that I cannot read here, and uh, some kind of bamboo picture done with a vermilion. We were talking about vermilion earlier. This is a vermilion pigment that is hugely, uh, I'm not sure if the word is oxidized. It might be a reduction. I don't know. There's been a chemical reaction between the uh, pigment and the air, oxygen, I guess. And what used to be uh, a brick red color has now become this color. And then we have, of course, this picture. Look at this. Long-term friends and fans of ours know what this is. Someone's saying, are they barren marks on the vermilion? My guess is no. My guess is this is wood grain showing through. Barren marks would be circular. Brush marks are the ones sideways. Barren marks would be circular and perhaps vividly this way. What we're looking at here is almost certainly grain. So that pigment, and it would have been called tan, T-A-N, tan, would have been brushed heavily on the block. You, know, you can see this, look. If you imagine a block having grain pattern like this. The baron presses it, and because of the grain, some areas get a bit more pressure than others. And that has had something to do with the way that it's quote-unquote oxidized. Very interesting. Good fun. It's completely ugly now and completely spoiled. And I have no idea the derivation, what the picture would have been. This one is why I bought this auction item. 
because, because, because. Somebody's already linked to it. We have in our catalog. Where is it? Here we are. We have in our catalog Dave's version of this print, which I cut back in. It would have been maybe 2002, somewhere around there. I had seen this somewhere. I don't even remember where now. I didn't have this print. I must have seen it in a book illustration, and I stole it myself for my Surimono albums. So this is Dave's version. And this is, again, late Meiji. The image is uh, purported to be by Ogata Korin. But the very first original form, I myself don't know. It could have been a screen painting back in the day. He did work for things like uh, lacquer boxes and stuff. I don't know where the original form came. Maybe it was just made up and his name was applied to it. They've done theirs differently too. Look at that. There's two blocks here. Obviously, there's a gray, a grayish tone and a darker black. Dave took it and made it more misty. I took my grayish tone, made it grayer, and my black is black enough, but not as rich black as theirs. And they're also working with much, much, much thinner paper than I am. And they've got something. Is it out here? What have they done here? I don't see much here. They have done a gradation. How? Not sure. Just rubbing with a brush, I think. Not sure. They've tried to do a gradation. I think when I did mine, when I did test printing, I tried a gradation and it, I couldn't get it smooth. I couldn't get it easy. It just looked uh, manufactured. So I gave up. You know, we. The idea of having a halo around the moon. Oh, good morning, good morning. Oh, it's Thursday, Sokka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, the yeah, yeah, Thursday. So I gave up on the halo, or not gave up. I decided just no way to do that. I think it's effective enough without it. I still don't like it. Nice coupe, it'll go into our collection. This is not for sale in the shop, this will be part of our collection. And for me, it's a nice remembrance of the image that provided the data source for one of my own reproduction prints. Okay, now by itself, that would not be much of a spectacular show and tell, but we have another big box. I'm looking for a knife. I can't. Oh, I, I got it. I got it. It's okay. I got it. My kingdom for a knife. Who's here? Ken Sant. Morning. Morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know what this is. It's another, another entry in our ongoing washi research. It's another large volume of information and paper samples back from the 1970s. We've talked about this before. The people at the Mainichi newspaper went nuts, certifiably nuts. And in the 1970s, they published many, many, many insane projects to do with Japanese prints and or Japanese paper. And this is another book published by the Mainichi newspaper with paper samples back from that era. And hopefully, not just samples of paper, hopefully information on how said paper was made. They published them as limited editions. They put them in libraries all over the country, tried to get people to buy them. 
and nobody now wants these things. They come up on Yahoo auctions pretty regularly. Let's have a look and see what's inside this one. And we have two volumes. We have the volume of paper samples itself and the volume of explanations. It's never been opened. Look at this. It's absolutely perfect condition. The spine isn't broken. It's never been freaking opened. People would have collected such thing or it ended in a library somewhere. Uh, yes, sample. Oh, look at this. Look at it. We could have guessed how this was going to go. Look at this. It's got a list of the papers that are inside this thing. And the very first one, <laughs> the very first one, it's got Kizuki Kami. These are all handmade, high quality papers. The very first one is Echizen Hosho, and the maker is, guess who? Iwano Ichibe, our maker, the guy who's been making our paper for all these years. But this is probably, let me get to the date at the back. This is 1976. Oh, so this is, this is interesting. This is the, the number eight Iwano, the eighth generation Iwano, died in 1975. So this paper will be made by our paper maker, Iwano Ichibe himself, the ninth generation. And this would have been one of the first projects he must have done after his dad died. Unfortunately, the paper is not very big, not a very large sample, but there we have it. What's next? Oh, Kaga Hosho. Oh, how much story. The story goes around and around and around. The fiber, mulberry fiber we're using for this paper these days comes from what they call Nasa. It's in Ibaragi Prefecture. And before the war and in the old days, there's no way paper makers in that area would have used fiber from the other side of the country. And we are told that they used fiber from Kaga, Kaga Prefecture, which is nearby them up on the Japan Sea coast. During the war years, when paper making was disrupted, that field, those fields of mulberry became, and the word that's used in the Japanese research papers is extinct. Now it turns out when you plant paper mulberry, you take a cutting from a current plant, you plant it in the proper environment and place, you cultivate it, and after three, four, five years, it starts to shoot up enough stuff that you can use. And then it lasts about, again, depending on climate and how much you cut and how much you abuse it or take care of it, it will last 10, 12, 15 years before that particular clump dies off. So maintaining a farm of mulberry fiber to make paper is an ongoing process. You don't grab it from the mountains randomly. You have to plant and you have to plant every couple of years on a rotation system, pull up your older ones, put new ones in there. And you have to do this steadily, steadily, steadily. Turns out, during the war years, the people were taken away from there, they went to the war, they came back, didn't get it going, and Kaga mulberry became, quote unquote, extinct. So the paper makers here, Iwano-san and his family, and the other paper makers in Echizen, cast around for something, and his father, number eight, landed in Nasu and chose the fiber from there. And all of our Echizen Hosho, since that time, has been made on fiber from Ibaraki. And this is a sample of the paper, Kaga Hosho, and I haven't read the instructions, the, the set explanation yet, but almost certainly it will have been made on Kaga Kozo. And as we get going now to try our paper making explorations, this is very much something that is on Dave's menu. See if we can figure out a way to get back to using the same kind of fiber that was used pre-war. It might not be the best way to go. It might not even be a good idea. I don't know. But we are going to explore and try and learn. This is it. It's Kurodani. It's Tosa. These are all Nishinouchi. This is all the famous papers from all over Japan. It's too bad the samples are so small. 
from Nara Prefecture, Shikoku. Look at this. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. This is not like top secret, unknown stuff. These types of washi are well known and understood. But for us, as a reference, this is going to be very, very useful. And the accompanying book, hopefully, will have lots of information about the making of. Yeah, look at this, full of information from the old days. This is exactly what we want. We want to try and learn as much as we can about how it was done before they got busy with trying to make it cheaper and easier and faster. We want to see how it was done when it was done slowly and carefully and perfectly. Look at this, reproductions of old books, translations of the text from the old books, information on fiber, gold mine, gold mine, gold mine. All going into our library. At some point, I guess this library is going to be an actual library. People can come in and look at books. You won't be borrowing this to take it home, but anybody with an interest in the research, as we get this library built up bit by bit by bit, of course, we'll make the information available to whoever could possibly use it. Okay, there we are, 9.33. I have got to get busy now in the shop. Someone's saying, could we pay someone from the old days to show you how it was done properly? They're dead generations ago. Generations ago. The family who's making our paper now is sort of doing it this way. But they've changed. They're no longer using wood lye, wood ash. They're using chemicals for boiling the paper. And as I said, they're not even using the same fiber. They're using fiber from a different part of Japan. They're gone. All we've got to do is try and pick up as much leftover data as we possibly can get our hands dirty and try and figure out how to do this. Someone's asking, are we raiding Sensei Martian? Okay, if he's on the way and we're raiding, okay. Those of you who don't know what this is, uh, one of our friends, let me get the text right, one of our friends is on a long walk around Japan at the moment, so we will send the group over there. If you want to give him a, a say hello to him and enjoy his, his stream for a while, please do so. I'll be now shutting ours down. Okay. Rating Sensei Martian, start. What do we do? It's counting down. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. See you later on Saturday. Thanks so much, guys. Bye for now.